this here mic. It's a little above our pay grade. <laughs> yes, it is way above my pay grade. Whoa, I'll get things straight here. Yeah, I can hear me now. This is going. I'm going. I'm on. Jerry. Yes, sir. Put your hand right here. Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight and we just give you all the praise and the glory and we are so, so happy to be here tonight. We just ask you to just shower down your Holy Spirit here on John Paul tonight. Just move him out of the way and just speak through him and share what you were wanting us all to take away from here tonight. We just thank you so much for, just we just love you so much, Jesus, and we just love you. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. You know, I love the way the Holy Spirit works. And, and if I had one thing that I hope that that people glean from my life, it is, is that the Holy Spirit took something absolutely ordinary and did something extraordinary. And He wants to with each and every one of us. He, I have no doubt the way that He works with me I think is really unique and individual and very unexpected. I didn't see it coming. And I think so it will be with each and every person that seeks Him and lets Him dwell in it inside of them and lets and, and let cuts Him loose, lets Him do the thing. Lets Him do what He created you to do. And you know as we as we start this does anybody here not believe that they were created for a purpose? Is, it, is there anybody here, are we all in agreement that we were absolutely created for a purpose? Do we agree on that? Okay. <clears throat> Does everybody here absolutely know what their purpose is? No. No, no, no. I, okay. I'm going to clear this up a little bit for us. Recently, I, I heard this in a new way. Matter of fact, a week ago, Wednesday, I heard this and it cleared up some things for me and it allowed me to go forward. And then, it's so interesting, where I was wanting to go, I wasn't sure if I should go and then Larry prayed in such a way that it reaffirmed exactly where I'm supposed to end up with tonight's message. But I want to lead into it. So, how do we know what our purpose is? God created you with a purpose. How do we figure out what that is? I want to make it real simple. So, if we're going back up, like all things in the Lord, it's incredibly complicated and very simple all at the same time. And when we draw them two things together, life gets a little easier. So if you will turn with me for just a second to Genesis. We'll go to the first chapter to start with. So if we go to Genesis 1. And let's go to the very last verse in Genesis here. And this is just for, I can't tell the time without first building the clock. It's just the way God made me. And, and it, I want it to make sense how we get to where we end up. So, so we've got to know that God created all the things, that, the waters and the, and the air and, and the birds and the animals and all the process separated the air from the water and the land and all of these things. Then we get to 31. Then God looked over all He had made and He saw that it was very good. And the evening passed and the morning came, marking the sixth day. So God had done all of these things. He looks around and he sees it's good. Now let's go to verse 2. And if we bump down here to the fifth verse. Coming from that, he looks around. It's all good. But interestingly, there's some things that are not yet in place. So if we get down here to Genesis 2, 5, it says, Neither the wild plants nor grains were growing on earth. Nothing growing yet. Neither the wild plants. He's done all this. He's got it in place. Sees it's good. However, something holding him up. 
neither the wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. Why? And there were no people to cultivate the soil. Isn't it interesting that he is holding off on the rains to make things grow? Everything's in place. He's created. He can see it's good. And yet he's still holding up because there's nobody here to take care of it. Crazy concept. Let's bump down here to verse 8. Then the Lord God planted the garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed man he had made. Before that it goes through how the process of creating man, I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to go through the why. What are we here to do? He created, I believe, with all that I am, He created the first man with a purpose, and He's created everyone since then with the same purpose. So let's figure out what that is. Let's get it really clear right now. Then the Lord God planted the, planted the garden in, the, in Eden in the east, and there, he placed, and there He placed the man He had made. And now if we bump down to 15, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. We were put here to tend the garden. The first one was, and so were you. Now here's question number two. And when I've asked this and, and going in a public fo format, I'll say, so what were you created to do? Usually there's somebody that says, well, we were created to serve God. How? in the garden. Now that leaves one question. What's the garden? How do we find the garden? Adam's garden was in Eden, so ours is surely not that garden. However, we're created with a purpose. It seems pretty clear that it was to tend to the garden. How do we know what our garden is? So I'm praying about this and it gets really simple again. I believe, and I've talked about this from this very pulpit right here. I believe with the whole heart that God's economy, if you will, that His government runs on a jurisdictional premise. I'll give you for example. At my house, My wife has some authority over me. She can talk to me. Sometimes when I ain't making any sense, she can be like a honey. I have some authority over her. I relinquished some authority to her. She didn't start out with authority over me. One day I give her some. I didn't start out with authority over her. One day she gave me some. So now we have authority over each other. She suddenly is my garden. I am her garden. We have kids. She fits under the garden. Then there's some things that just start happening. We get placed in certain places that we have jurisdiction over. We have authority over. So how do we figure out what our garden is? It's what we have authority over. I have a relationship with my brother Jerry, so I could sit down with him. I have some jurisdiction in that area. I could sit down with him, and I can talk to him, and he's going to receive it. Somebody else at the bank, I see them. I don't have the same conversation with them because I don't have authority there. Back to my wife, I can have a conversation with her that I absolutely cannot have with Ann because... She hasn't relinquished authority to me. I don't have none. So we have a completely different situation. I could wear myself out trying to talk sense in the hand. <laughs> Not my garden. <laughs> do, do, do you see where, I, see where I'm going here? See how this all matches up? God has a jurisdiction-based government. Now, all of a sudden, one day I show up and I have jurisdiction over a church body. I have authority there. I have responsibility there. I have a responsibility to tell them the truth. 
I have a responsibility to be a watchman. I didn't pick it. It picked me. Through prayer, I realized that I was called to do it. So I do my best to tell them the truth. Here a little bit ago, Brother Larry was talking to us. And he says, uh, I'm going to do a short version of his prayer a minute ago. And he's like, God, I'd like you to make some sense out of what's going on. There's a lot of crazy crap going on and it don't make no sense. I'd like you to make some sense out of that. And I'm like, oh man. I know some of the answers, but I really wouldn't want to do it from somebody else's pulpit. But somehow or another, when this mic got strapped on me, it came under my jurisdiction. So, if you're a little bit offended for, about politics, from the pulpit you're not alone but you're going to hear it a little anyhow and I don't believe that it was ever God's intention now you think about this for just a second 1947 some powers that be decided that it was a good idea to, to absolutely make a separation of church and state so who in their right mind thinks that God's like, hey, it would be a really good idea if you guys would go out there and do your governing without including me in it. You guys will do a much better job without me than you would if I was involved in your, in your state, in your government. Anybody think that he was sitting back thinking that? Anybody think that as we've gone through time it's played out well? I don't either. Then you get along in 1962 and we go ahead and seal the deal that we're not going to pray in school no more. Who in their right mind would think that it would be a, bad, a good idea to not only exclude God from government, but now we're not going to invite Him to have any input in what we do in school. As our children go up, grow up, without the moral compass of the Bible being taught from school any longer. How's that played out? It ain't too hard to see that we have an entirely different moral compass today than we did in 1962 and way different than we did in 1947. Now we inherited that stuff I wasn't born yet in 62. Jerry was, but he didn't have much of the stuff. That he wasn't deciding what went on. <laughs> but I was alive in 1980. I was a sophomore in high school. They removed the Ten Commandments from school at that time. So they just go ahead and remove all of God's Word now. And most government buildings. That ain't played out too well either. So, in a sense, we're reaping what we sow. But there's more to the story, and I, I want to tell you some stuff, you know. But before I go, I want you to turn with me to Ezekiel 33. And then I'm going to tell you some things that I know. And some things that we need to be aware of as God's people. So here I am with some jurisdiction and I got Ezekiel 33 hanging over my head. Once again, a message came, from, came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your people this message. When I bring an army against a country, against a country, the people of that land choose one of their own to be a watchman. Isn't it interesting that watchman didn't get to choose what, that he was a watchman. It was chosen for him. When the watchman sees that the enemy is coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. Then if those who hear the alarm refuse to take action, it is their own fault if they die. They heard the alarm but ignored it, so the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But if the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people, he 
But we didn't choose to be a watchman. We've already cleared that up. Still, he is responsible for their captivity. They will die in their sins, but I, the Lord God, will hold the watchman responsible for their deaths. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Now, ain't that crazy? First, the people picked him, and now God's picking him himself. He's double picked, and he's got this responsibility on him. He was chosen. He was called. And God says, I'm going to call, not only am I going to call you, but I'm going to hold you accountable for what you do and do not say. I strapped this mic on. My God's going to hold me responsible for what I do and do not say. No matter how anybody feels about separation of church and state. Now, if I see a bus fixing to come barreling through that wall and I don't call out, hey, get out of the way, I'm responsible. If I say, look out, it's coming. I'm going to be okay, live or die, I'm going to be fine. But I don't have to answer for not yelling. So here we go. You know, it's crazy, there was double, double uh, affirmation when I kept, walked in the door. I didn't know anything about this. But uh, I just said, I haven't read the article, but I'm really intrigued by the title. The government is sending spies to churches to stop worship. Who ever thought that had happened in America? In my America. In my garden. This here thing is my garden, and I somehow have been in such a slumber that I've let it get to this point. What is going on? Now we're back to Brother Larry's question. So, I'm going to tell you what's going on. We have an entity out there that's been working very strategic for a very long time to bring us to a point of absolute world socialism. Socialism's been a bad idea. It didn't go with God's word from the beginning. And if you don't believe it, just peel her back to Tower of Babel. Read the story. Socialism has a way of Eliminating God from two ways. One, because we get so intertwined that we don't need Him anymore. And the other is, is we, we have entities that we have put in authority over us, one way or another, that decide we don't need Him. So where we're going and what's fixing to happen in this country is headed right here. And, and I'll tell you how I even found out about it. I was just as dumb as anybody else. I didn't know a thing about it. And COVID come along and woke me up. If it wasn't for COVID, I still wouldn't know. But because COVID come along, I would get, I would get, feel, I would feel a lot of questions. And they would ask, is this the end of it? Is a great tribulation, tribulation coming next? Are the times that we have known going to be gone forever? So I start, I'm a dummy. Other people have had years and years of theological training. I got the Holy Spirit, so I got to research. He shows me stuff, or I got to research it out. So I'm digging around to find ties in the Bible, and I'm really wanting some ties from Revelation back into Isaiah and Daniel and Ezekiel and in some of these prophecy chapters so I can tie some stuff together. And because we have technology now, I have the luxury of digging around through Google or dot, dot, go or however. Heavenly Father, I praise you for putting us here in this country. You know, the truth of the matter is we could have been born any here, anywhere. None of us chose to be here. You put us here through your choosing, through your grace. 
You have put us in this garden. And you have given us a responsibility now and we're becoming more aware of it. And tonight, ultimately, absolutely aware that this is our garden to tend to. And we have a responsibility to do so. Father, I love you. I thank you for putting us here. Now, Father, I pray that I pray that you would show us how to take this country that, which is on the shifting sand and put it back on the bedrock of you. Father, how, how we go forward, how will we take this next step to stop murdering babies in our nation? Father, how will we take this next step to put the Bible back in our schools? Father, how will we take the next step to have you taught in a public forum? How will we take the next step that those governing, governing over us will seek you first irregardless of what the voters think? Father, I praise you for that and I just pray that you would show us clearly how to go forward from here. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so this here deal, this here deal, government sent its spies to churches to stop worship. It's just one piece of the puzzle. What's going to happen here is that we're going to have what religion that we are chosen for us. How do I know this? Because of this research that I was doing, I'm Googling up scripture on trying to tie, make ties to things that we have studied our whole lives and knew that sooner or later it's coming, though we were pretty happy living the way we were living, but we've all known that sooner or later there's going to come a time when the mark of the beast, one world order, um, things like this. It, and uh, when I Googled up mark of the beast, it was easy, you know, and I went, went through quite a bit of scripture, and then I Googled up one world order. I didn't get one scripture. Boom, 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 boom. Shows up. United Nations. One World Agenda. 2030. Agenda 21. Agenda 21. Biden's Agenda for One World Order. In that order. Just like that. I'm like, what in the world is this? Has anybody here heard of Agenda 21? You have. Most have not. Matter of fact, that's the, the numbers that I heard last week was like 600 have not for every one that has. It's crazy. And I, for the life of me, do not know why those that know are not yelling louder. There's some patriots out there that know about it. And they're they're going at they're they're going at particular things that are happening. They defund the police or what particular candidates are doing. And I'm like, man, they're sitting back there knocking branches off of the tree. Why are we not exposing the roots of this thing so we can kill the whole dang tree rather than peeling a few branches off? I don't know, but I want to expose some roots to y'all tonight. And the answer is in Agenda 21. If you don't believe it, you need to go home and you need to peel that thing open and start reading it. And I'll tell you, tell you what it looks like. It looks like that. They pick. There's going to be one world agenda. There's going to be, there's going to be decided housing. It's called smart living. It looks like this. I seen it when I was in Fort Worth the other day. I was like, there it is, right there. There's so much, most of this is already in place. In, there it is. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's, it's this square building. It, this, this building here is just in the process of being built. And it's on the outskirts of Fort Worth. There's probably hundreds of them being built as we speak. And they, they, the plan is, is to ultimately people are going to be in this dense living because we're a lot easier to control in that way. Joe Biden the other day, 
Well, some of you have heard about it. Some of you need to look it up. The, the potato farmer's <coughs> wife at the town hall meeting, she asked him, and she did it in such a way that I believe that she was trying to confuse him. And he answered in such a way, she, he asked, she asked him, she said, what are you going to do us potato farmers out here having a hard time? There's less of us every year. And she goes through this scenario about different laws and one thing or another. And he answers like this. He says, what we're going to do is, is we're going to put the land in land banks and then we're going to show you how to grow carbon friendly plants and we're going to pay you for planting those so you'll no longer have to worry about your income. And then he flips right over and he starts talking about manure and how you pelletize manure and you take the methane out of it and the media portrayed him like he was an idiot. But the truth is, he wasn't even confused. He understood the question and he answered truthfully. And the truth of the matter is, is that's what it looks like in Joe Biden's mind what's fixing to happen. And the us that he was talking about is the United Nations, not the United States. And I'll back it up. Daryl Ford started a movement. And he starts organizing this thing. And it's got roots back further than that. Satan's always had this plan. We always think that this is a Democrat-Republican issue. It ain't. It's a good versus evil issue. And we've had... We've had a lot of presidents we thought were okay that were not. Gerald Ford starts this thing. Jimmy Carter runs with it a little bit. What Reagan did with it, I do not know. It's hard to prove, but I can tell you what is easy to prove is that George H. Bush formulated it. He put, he put some wheels under it. Clinton furthered it. George W. Bush endorsed it, and dear sweet President Obama in 2011 fine-tuned it, and in 2015, before he gave up his office, the primary objective of 174 countries, including the one that you're sitting in right now today, is that by 2030, we will be in one world government. For the purpose of stamping out poverty, this is the hook, for the purpose of stamping out poverty globally. What they say that there is going to happen in 2030 is that they will go to the most impoverished nations first, take the resources from the wealthiest, and pour them into the most impoverished. Now there's a whole bunch of other things all along the way that that's going to happen and they're going to build in there and, and uh, as we speak as we speak the things that you see are the implementation of this plan defund the police part of the deal they got to have a new form of government we've got to be so dissatisfied with the one we've got that we will openly accept this new idea um, you go anywhere you want to uh, the civil unrest that's between us, the division, it's all part of the plan. I can tell you, it's, it, it's purposefully brought upon us. Why in the world, the other day, in the, in the debate, President Trump brought it up three different times. Joe Biden denied it zero. He just changed subject each time. Why... President Trump didn't choose, or the or those that are leading it, that are educating them, why he didn't choose to camp out there longer and educate the people. I'm going to tell you, even liberal America is not going to like the looks of this socialist idea. There's a few, I know there's a few that are claiming they're Marxists and, and they're ready for this thing. But 80 some odd percent of America, no matter whether they are liberal or conservative, are not going to go for this. Why in the world our patriots and our president is not exposing this to a greater way of seeing a clearer vision? I have no idea. I can't figure it out. I'm sure there's motive behind it or there's a reason or God's holding them back. I don't know, but I know that I ain't holding back. When I discovered it, 
And I can see that we're this close. And then I, so I can see, you know, that how this rolls. And this is just how my mind absorbs this. So, so in this, in this one world government, they're going to tell us what to farm, how to farm. They're going to tell us what to believe. They're going to tell us where our children should go to school and what they should learn when they get there. And in the process of that right this second, there is a movement inside the United Nations. One of the things that they're teaching them is sexuality. And one of the things that's based on this is that they're teaching globally, some of it in the United States as we speak, there's a teaching out there that is teaching that it is healthy for people to be active sexually from birth. Sounds nuts. Because it is. But it's also the truth. In the state of Texas, as we speak, there's a law to change the age of consent to 11. And it's probably fixing the past. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm just wanting to get you all a little, open your mind to something that he knows. He did a little study. And this thing is crazy out there. I'm just telling you little bits and pieces of it. But what I'm telling you is, is we gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta start making some noise. We got to start educating. Most people don't know anything about it. We got to educate them. We got to educate ourselves. And then, as we educate ourselves, we got to educate those that will listen. We got about 40 days to figure some of this out. I don't know what's going to happen. It looks to me like there's going to be civil unrest either way. What's that? What's that going to look like? I don't know. I think that the Holy Spirit showed me this I was asked this a couple days about so what are we supposed to do about it I said well I don't know for sure but I believe it looks something like this I believe that this is God's intent. And I don't believe that He's gonna He's gonna ease up on this intent. In 1 Corinthians 1 10, it says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the authority. This is Paul talking to the church of Corinth. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters. I want you to notice right here that he start right out. He ain't talking to everybody. He's talking to his brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to those that are in the same harness as him. We as Christians in America have had the wrong idea about this a lot of times. He didn't say, I appeal to you, brothers. And he, he didn't say, I appeal to you, all people. He said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters. 